हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम संपदा कुलकर्णी वेलकम्स यू इन माय चैनल टेक टॉक्स इन दिस वीडियो सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू द डिटेल्स अबाउट रियल टाइम एंटिटी देर आर डिफरेंट रियल टाइम एंटिटी अराउंड अस एंड वी द प्रोग्रामर हैज टू थिंक अबाउट हाउ टू मेंटेन एंड हाउ टू वर्क विद द रियल टाइम एंटिटीज लाइक स्टूडेंट और बुक्स or the employee so the solution is structures structure in c++ structure is a feature in the programming language like c or c++ where here we can store the details about any real time entity before moving to the content i would like to request to subscribe my channel tech talks and keep the bell ringing here let's start with the structure in c++ now whenever you are going to think about any real time entity can you think like if any real time entity is there its attributes will be of different data types so can we work with these different data types under a under same real time entity so my question is have you ever thought if there is any way to store dissimilar data or data of dissimilar data types so the answer is yes we can do that so we can use the structure to store different types of data that is the type data of different data types we can combine to form a structure now let's have an example that for example you are a student and as a student you are having different attributes like your name is a string your roll number is of type integer and your grade point is of type float so if i want to store all the information of any particular student all together that is its name roll number and grade point so we are having a solution for storage of these type of data along with the entities that is nothing but a structure so all these things that is name roll number and grade points are of different data types and here we will use the structure to store the information of different data types or data of different data types now let's move forward for defining a structure how to define a structure so the syntax for the definition of structure is with the help of keyword struct and followed by the name of the structure and these are different members that you can use in a structure with different data types always structure members are enclosed in between curly brackets ended with a semicolon here i am giving you an example that is the same example that is of the student as we have discussed in the previous slide that the roll number of type integer name is of type string and grade points is of type float so all these three members are there with different data types and that all combine together to form a structure of student here this is also called as user defined data type now let's move forward for the declaration declaration of the structure variable how we can declare the structure variable just as we declare variable of type integer or character we can declare the variable of structure as well because as i explained previously structure is a user defined data type just same as of your integer or character only the difference is that integer or character are inbuilt data types but the structure variable is user defined data type we can mold the this user defined data type as far as our requirements are concerned so that's why this is called as user defined data type suppose we want to store the roll number name and phone number or any another information or with respect to our example if the grade point of a student then we have to declare a structure and if we i want to store the information of n number of students for that i have to declare that all n number of students as a variable of a structure so here you can see that i have declared a structure over here before main function 
with the three members as discussed previously that is roll number name and grade points respectively of data type integer string and float now here i have declared the structure variables or the variable of structure they are s1 s2 and s3 here you can see that i am going to highlight the thing yes so here you can see that the data type of the variable is nothing but structure student okay here you can see that the data type of the structure a uh, data type of a variable is nothing but structure student and the variable names are s1 s2 and s3 so in this way we can declare the variables of a structure this is the first way for the declaration of a variable of a structure the another way to declare the variable of a structure is like this so here along with the declaration of a structure you can declare the same variable as well at the end of the structure or at the closing bracket of the structure and ended with a semicolon both the things are same only the difference is that here this is the declaration is done within the main function and here this is the declaration can be done before main function or this is the declaration is called as global declaration the both the things are same only the thing is here this is the declaration which is nothing but the local declaration and this is nothing but the global declaration as we are doing all these things before main so in this way we can declare the variable here with this example i would like to explain one thing that at a time we are storing the values or the records of three students that is s1 s2 and s3 for every student you supposed to store the roll number of the first student roll name of the first student and grade point of the first student in the same way roll number name and grade point of the second student roll number name and grade point for the third student so in this way you supposed to access the members of the structure for every variable this is about the next slide how to access the members of the structure so here there are there is a way to access the member of the structure so in this slide we are going to see how to enter the details of each student that is its roll number or a name or a grade point of the student suppose we want to assign a roll number to the first student for that we need to access the roll number of the first student and that we can do by writing s1 dot roll number equal to 1 here you can see that this roll number is nothing but the member of your structure and s1 is the variable and here you can see that between dot operator is there and with the help of this dot operator we can access any of the member of the structure so use of the dot operator which will help us to access the member of the structure okay so here here i have uh, mentioned the things like the with the help of dot operator we will access all the members of the structure and this is understood as roll number of a structure s1 here we can see that we have used it uh, the dot operator that is along with the variable of structure s1 and the member of the structure roll number so that's why this is understood as roll number for the student s1 now let's move forward for the next slide here i am explaining you the example of how to work with the structure in c++ so now let's move forward for the program i am I, i have given a program in this slide this is the program in c++ and here you can see that this is nothing but the declaration of the structure the same thing is there only i have tried uh, this example with uh, some different members like the roll number name and a phone number uh the data type of roll number is integer data type of name is string and the phone number is data type is integer again that there are two different ways in which we can assign 
the values to the variable of the structure so this is the first way here you can see that this is the first way where i have assigned the values to the structure or the member of the structure they should follow the sequence that is first is of type integer so your first value should be of type integer second is of type string so that's why your second value should be of type string uh, enclosed in a double quote and the third number is nothing but or the third member is nothing but of data type integer so that's why it should be of type integer so it should follow the sequence whenever you are going to assign a value all these values must be enclosed in opening and closing curly brackets and separated by commas and the another way to declare a variable is nothing but only a, uh, declaring a variable p1 and p2 so here if i want to assign a values to this p1 and p2 and p3 so this i can do like this also p2 dot roll number equal to 2 and p2 dot name is equal to krishna i am giving a name to this particular second student as a krishna and its phone number that i am going to assign over here in the same way we can do for p3 student its roll number name and phone number i am assigning 3 lakshmi and this is the phone number respectively so this also you can do another way is also you can access all these things from the user you can accept all these things from a user with the help of c in statement and here i am trying to display all the things one by one the first student i am going to display its roll number its name and phone number and that you are going to access with the help of dot operator you can see over here we have used everywhere the dot operator and with the help of dot operator only you will be able to access any member of the structure so this roll number name and phone number of the p1 student so that's why i have displayed over here to first student now here i am displaying student second student and that's why i am using the variable that is p2 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 along with the dot operator with its roll number name and phone number and in the same way for a third student now i am displaying the things for p3 p3 and p3 because p3 is holding the record of the third student with the dot operator i am accessing all the three members of the structure you again always have to keep in mind that every time whenever you are going to use a structure the memory is get allotted will be a continuous memory that is two bytes for integer first two bytes for integer next is for the string and last two bytes are for the phone number again so whatever the memory is required for this structure will be in a continuous form and whenever you are going to declare this p1 p2 and p3 that are not the array variable they are just a simple uh, distinct variable so that's why the memory allotted for p1 will be in a continuous form for p2 will also be in a continuous form and p3 will also be in a continuous form but at the different address locations that always you have to keep in mind now first of all we have to think about how are we going to maintain the records of all the students from our class or if we have to maintain the n number of books in our library or employees in a company all these things are more than one that is the number of students from a class number of books in library and number of employees in a company so the same thing i am uh, trying to explain you over here that so how to maintain record of all the students or books or the employees in our company so for that we have already deal with arrays what are the arrays arrays are nothing but they are used to store similar types of data so can we make an array of structure that is can we make an array of students can we make an array of books can we make an array of employees so the answer is yes we can make an array of structure so now let's move to the next slide for more details of array of the structure so what is an array of the structure so first of all let's see as i explained the example in the previous 
video that we can create the structure and at a time we have created the variable of three students in the previous video if you want to know about more about the details or the introduction about structure in c++ for that i am providing you a shortcut link in this right up corner you can go through that video because this is the slide which is linked with the previous video so that you will uh, better understand what i want to say in this particular slide so suppose i want to store the information of three students that i have already uh, covered in the previous video but now suppose if i want to store the information of 100 students then what i have to do so for that we are having a solution that we will use an array of the structure so declaration of the 100 variable is not possible so that's why the array of structure is always a good option or a good solution so that's why we will go for the array of the structure so now let's compare what we can do for the declaration of the variables so now let's move forward for the next slide here you can see that this is the first part where that we have already covered in the previous video session that is this is nothing but the student structure declaration where three members are there roll number name and grade points of every student and in the main function i have declared three separate variables they are s1 s2 and s3 the same thing we can do like this also while declaring a structure itself only at the end of the structure we can declare the variable but this is okay if i am going to use these few variables in our program but whenever i want to declare an array of the structure what i have to do so again i am having a two option with me for the declaration of array of the structure the declaration of structure is just same as of the previous example only here you can see that the difference for the declaration of the variable so here i am declaring an array how we are going to declare an array just same as of the declaration of ordinary array if it is of type integer i suppose to write down integer a of 5 in the same way this is nothing but the data type so i just uh, uh, highlight the things like this is nothing but your data type and uh, this color is not visible so let me change the color okay i am going to use this one okay so yes here you can see that this is nothing but the data type of my um, variable that is nothing but a student structure that is nothing but my user defined data type this is the variable of name of the variable is nothing but the student and this is nothing but the opening closing square bracket is nothing but the subscript of the array in which in between opening and closing bracket i have to men mention the size that is how many students i have to create as i explained in the previous example if i want to create the array of 100 students or if i want to maintain the information of 100 students it's not feasible to create 100 variables and to maintain them so instead of i can use an array of the student of size 100 where i can store the information of all 100 students that is for all 100 students i am going to store the roll number i am going to store the name as well as i am going to store the grade point so in this way i can arrange all the things i can maintain all the things but in this example i am taking the example of five students as in the next slide i am going to ex explain the same thing with the help of c++ program and for the feasibility i have used or uh, uh, if time constraint is there so that's why i have used the uh, array size as 5 this is the first way how to declare a variable uh, array of the structure in the same way this is the another way in which we can declare the array variable where uh, just same as of this example where ordinary variable general variables i have declared in the same way i can declare the array of the structure as well at the end of the structure definition so in the same way both the things are same only the thing is that this is nothing but the declaration that you supposed to do before main and this will be the global declaration and if you want to declare that within main locally so for this i can 
go for this type of declaration this only the difference so now let's see how to declare the variable uh, with the help of program for the five students in the next slide so i am moving to the next slide and here you can see that i have mentioned the example over here how to implement an array of the structure in c++ the things are same that is the structure is already declared with three different parameters or uh, not parameters with the three different attributes we can say and here i have declared the variable that is array of the structure so here you can see that i have declared the array of the structure whose data type is structure student and whose size is 5 so here you can see that the declaration of the variable this is local to the main function now as i have declared the array of a structure with the size 5 so i supposed to accept the information of five students so that's why i have used a for loop over here the first c out statement is for student number first student as i, I, I starting from 0 for the first student enter a roll number we are accepting a roll number with the help of dot operator here you can see that every time dot operator is there and the main or important thing you can see over here i am using the another color to highlight it again or to differentiate it again so here you can see that here whenever we supposed to access any of the member of the structure we are going to use the name of the variable along with the subscription that is ith student so that's why student i when i is equal to zero i am going to use that is zero to student and the roll number here you can see that i have used the member as well uh, because we are going to access the member of a structure with the help of dot operator dot operator so that's why it means that i am accessing the roll number of the zeroth student in the next line uh, enter name so what i will do i will accept the name of the zeroth student here you can see that the member is nothing but name so name of the zeroth student and at the end enter the phone number of the zeroth student again so that's why in the same way the zeroth student's phone number i am going to access over here and again one more thing you can uh, uh, see over here that we have used dot operator to access all the members of the structure this is the first for loop this will go for g i equal to 0 to i is less than 4 so for 0th student first student second student third and fourth student so that is from 0 to 4 it will accept the separate values for all the students and at the end whatever information we have accepted from a user that we are trying to display with the help of another for loop here uh, i have mentioned in a comment that printing the values for the student again i am i am mentioning the number of student over here usually we start counting from one so that's why i have used i plus one for our reference if you want to display it from zero remove that i plus one just display i over there and here i am displaying that the roll number for the ith student with the dot operator again name of the ith student and phone number of the ith student i have given each and everything in this program i hope all of you have understood how to access the uh, array or how to implement an array of the structure how to access the members of the structure if it is an array of a structure and at the end i would like to request you to implement the same program in your ide and let's check what you, you are getting the output this video session i am going to explain you the concept of memory allocation how the memory will get allotted for a structure or a structure variable we can say that that variable may be a single variable that multiple variables we can declare of a structure as well as we can declare an array of the structure as well for these many different types of variables how the memory will get allotted that i am going to explain you in this video session so now let's see first of all how the variable will get declared of a type of user defined data type structure and how the memory will get allotted for the same so first of all let's start with the structure declaration 
this will be the structure declaration and with the help of this type of declaration we can declare any real time entity here i have taken an example of student and with the three members of the structure if you want to know more details about the structure for your reference i am providing a shortcut link in this right up corner where i have already explained the concept of structure in detail so these are the members whose names are roll number name and grade points with the data types integer string and float so let's start with the memory allocation concept so first of all when we are going to start with the memory allocation we should have to think about how many bytes it will require for every member of a structure so if it is of type integer it will take 4 bytes now here you need to keep in mind that always uh, these 4 bytes i am going to consider by considering that you are going to work with the 64 bit system it varies with the operating system the operating system is of how many bytes then it depend on that how many bytes it will require to store any uh, type of data so now here i am considering that um, with the 64-bit uh, system it will require four bytes to store the roll number so graphically i am going to explain the same thing over here so these are the four bytes allotted for a roll number now let's move forward if it is of type data type string so again for the 64 bit system it will require 32 bytes to store the type uh, or variable of type string so now next 32 bytes i'm going to allocate for the string data type whose um, name is variable name is name and the last one is grade point so as again it will require 8 bytes to store the grade point of data type float so next 8 bytes will be allotted for the grade point here you can see that so in total it will require 44 bytes to store a single variable of the user defined data type structure whose members are roll number name and grade points of data type integer string and float respectively now i am going to move forward for the declaration of a variable this is only the declaration of the structure but now how to declare a variable that i have mentioned over here so s1 s2 s3 three separate or different variables are there whose data type is user defined data type structure student for every variable it will require 44 bytes just same as of whenever you are going to declare integer a b c three different variables of data type integer so that all the three variables will require four bytes separately for the uh, storage of the value so in the same way s1 it will require 44 bytes s2 it will require 44 bytes again s3 it will require 44 bytes as these three variables are separate variables so these 44 bytes will get allotted separately somewhere at different location in the memory they will not be in a continuous form the same concept i am going to explain you graphically over here so this is first four bytes for the variable s1 whose base address is 65530 again you have to keep in mind that this will not be the way how internally the addresses will get access they will be in the hexadecimal number system just for the understanding concept i am going to use these as the unsigned integers so now uh, this is the first 44 bytes for the variable s1 somewhere at different location that is at 655656 Three zero. I'm sorry. Six five six three zero. At this location, the next forty four bytes will get allotted for the variable s two, and at the third different location, that is six five seven three zero, the next forty four bytes for s three will get allotted. So here you can see that I'm going to use the highlighter to highlight the thing. These address locations are different. This is the address location for s one next 44 bytes will be in a continuous form but the address locations for s1 s2 and s3 are at the different locations so that i want to explain that's why i am explaining all these things graphically so this is the base address for the second variable that is s2 and this is the base address for the third variable which is nothing but s3 so internally the 44 bytes will be in a continuous form no doubt because these are the member of a structure but 
the memory location for s1 is at different location s2 is at different location s3 is at different location so always you have to keep in mind that if there are separate variable declaration then they will but will get allotted at the different memory locations they will not be in a continuous form but let's move to the next slide where i am going to explain you the same concept with the help of arrays what will happen with the arrays so this is nothing but the declaration of array and its memory allocation here you can see that i have used an array now this is the slide who is dealing about arrays and its memory allocation this part is same because i am keeping the same structure and again it will require a 44 bytes only the difference is that now here just go forward so here this is nothing but the declaration of a variable this is nothing but an array if you will compare this slide with the previous one where three separate variables were declared s1 s2 and s3 but now here i am declaring the three variables but with the help of an array so what is difference in the previous slide a slide in the current and in the current slide so here as this is declared as an array the memory will get allotted will be in a continuous form so here you can see that yes you can here you can see that the memory will get allotted will be in a continuous form the 44 bytes are in continuous just same as of the previous there is no any difference but here you can see that i like i would like to highlight the things that is base address so this is the base address which is nothing but the useful to access the s0 that is the first variable of the array of the structure stood uh, sorry here it must be stood um, by mistake i have written it as s the next those so these are the first 44 bytes which are allotted for stood 0 after that the 45th byte is nothing but 65574 is allotted or will be the base address for stood 1 from this continuous next 44 bytes will get used for stood 1 and again next 45th address location is nothing but 65618 is nothing but the address location of the base address location for the variable stood 2 so these are the last 44 bytes so here you can see that whole three variables are allotted in a sequence or in a continuous form because this is an array okay these are not the separate variables they are not declared separately this is an array so whenever you are going to deal with any type of array that may be integer that may be float that may be a character string any time whenever you are going to deal with an array internally memory will get allotted will be in a continuous form so in the same way if my array is of user defined data type structure student then also it will allocate a memory in the sequence or in a continuous form so the memory will get allotted for an array of a structure it will be in a continuous form so that's why it is declared or it is allotted like this how to access structure variable with the help of pointer that i am going to focus in this video session so let's see how to declare a structure variable with the help of pointers like we have pointers to integer pointer to character or any another data type we can use with the help of pointers in the same way we also have pointers pointing to structures these pointers are called structure to pointers now we'll see how to define a pointer to a structure this is the syntax of a structure along with how to define a pointer to the structure this part all of you are knowing that structure having number of members in it but now here we are going to declare the pointer type variable of data type structure we'll see the example of the same on the same slide so this is the example which i am going to use from last few video sessions so the same example i am going to use over here as well this is the user defined data structure of student having these three members 
under the user defined data type structure student here the first thing is that we are going to declare an ordinary variable of structure student the second variable is nothing but a pointer type variable whose name is ptr and with this statement you can see that the pointer type variable is a variable which is a special kind of variable which is designed to store the address of the another variable another ordinary variable so that's why i am passing the address or i am storing copying the address of the student variable in a ptr variable here you have to keep in mind that the data type of the both the variable should match and i am matching both the things over here as the data type of stud and ptr both are nothing but user defined data type structure student so in this way we can declare a pointer type variable now we will see that with the help of example so this highlighted part you have to keep in mind for always that with this type of uh, declaration you can use a pointer to structure type of variable now let's see the same thing with the help of example graphical explanation of the same example now this is the thing all of you are knowing now here you just concentrate over here but one by one i am going to add the lines over here and accordingly i am going to explain you it with the help of graphical representation so the first statement is struct student struct student stud stud is nothing but a variable name so how it will get allocate a memory so this is nothing but it will allocate a memory for your student and after this you have to keep in mind that the uh, whenever you are going to execute this particular statement and your uh, internally the memory will get allotted for this particular structure student total 44 bytes will get allotted for this now after this uh, just keep uh, in mind or just see over here the next statement next statement is nothing but the declaration of pointer variable when this statement will get executed internally what is going to be happen pointer variable will get allotted a memory memory for pointer variable at some different location and after this these are the nothing but the declaration of two separate variable that is stored and a ptr now let's look at the next statement of our pointer type variable and its assignment with the address of student so here you can see that whatever this pointer type variable this will be holding the address base address of the student uh, variable that is stood ultimately it is pointing to the base address so here i am trying to explain the same thing that this is a ptr variable who is pointing to the base address of the student variable now the next question is how to access all these things so accessing members of structure with pointer variable for this we have to use the arrow operator so with this pointer type variable we can access all the three members of the structure they are roll number name and grade point so here i am going to explain the same thing that is whenever you are going to access this variable uh, P or using variable ptr to access any member of a structure you have to use the arrow operator i'm going to highlight over here which will help you to understand how to use an arrow operator so this is nothing but arrow operator with the help of this arrow operator we can access the roll number but now the same thing we can do like this that is with the help of dot operator but only you need to keep in mind that you have to use value at the address ptr with the help of value at the address ptr that is pointer variable uh, variable name that is pointer ptr because our variable name is ptr so that's why with the help of this ptr variable value at the address ptr we can access the same field but with the help of dot operator in the same way rest of all members we can access with the help of arrow operator so ptr arrow name it means that name of the ptr name of the uh, what we can say student whose address base address is stored in a pointer type variable ptr we can um, uh, pronounce it like this and the same way value at the address ptr dot name also we can access and the last one grade point also we can access with the help of ptr arrow gp and in the same way dot operator we can access the same thing over here 
but you have to keep in mind that usually we are going to use this representation when we are going to use the uh, variable structure uh, structure variable with the help of pointer that is pointer to structure then we supposed to use the arrow operator now in the next slide i am going to explain you thus all these things with the help of example how to use the pointer to structure in cpp so now i am having a program with me and where the same thing is used over here a student is declared with two members now in this example it is declared with two members and here in this statement i have assigned the values to the stood variable okay all these things i have uh, hard uh, i have used hard coded that is all these things are assigned i am not going to accept all these things from a user just because of uh, space i uh, i'll require more space to uh, write down that many statements so that's why i am to avoid all these things i have uh, assigned all these values to the no variable directly instead of that you can access all the things from a user using c in statement that also you can do now the next statement is about the de declaration of the pointer type variable so here this is the another statement here you can see that this is nothing but a pointer type variable i have declare over here so now with the help of this i am going to declare my pointer type variable here i have given a comment pointer to structure declaration the most important statement is this one where i am going to assign the base address of a student to the pointer type variable so as ptr is nothing but a pointer type variable it will be holding the address of the student so we have to keep in mind or this this part the highlighted part is very much important whenever you are going to use pointer to structure the next statement here i am i am giving this with the help of dot operator so uh, if i want to display all these things with the help of dot operator then with the help of this dot operator then what i have to use i have to use a variable stood a simple variable uh, that is nothing but here i have declared it okay and the same thing you can do with the help of value at the address ptr as well the, but just to avoid a confusion i am going to focus on a point a uh, uh, pointer type variable ptr with arrow operator and the, with the help of arrow operator you can uh, access all the members of a structure now you have to think about the output of this program i have not included the output of this program in my video because i am expecting that all these things you are going to do it by your own and then let's check what will be the output just only for a reference i am explaining you what will be the output that it will display krishna and one as for this particular c out statement because with the dot operator i am displaying the name and roll number and the same output that is krishna and one will be the output with the another c out the second wala see out statement as well because with the help of arrow operator and with the help of pointer variable i am accessing the same value of the structure so you just execute this code and then let's check whether you are getting the same output or not so this is highlighted thing is for dot operator the next highlighted thing is for the arrow operator and i hope you are able to understand the thing what i have just explained to you passing structure or any variable to the function that we can do with the help of these two ways that is pass by value and pass by reference so here i am going to explain you both the things that is with pass by value that is passing structure to the function by value as well as passing structure to the function by reference so now let's start with the explanation about why or how to pass structure to the function so whenever there is a task which we are going to perform with the help of function and on the structure variable then that we have to pass to the function so as i explained previously that we can pass the structure to the function as just same as of the variable ordinary variable as we pass so 
there are two methods two ways which we can use to pass the structure to the function they are the first one is pass by value second one is pass by reference so now let's start with the pass by value so here i am explaining you all these things with the help of example that is here you can see that this is nothing but a structure student is declared just same as of our previous program previous examples so the same example same structure i have mentioned over here uh, let's start with main function so this is nothing but a variable structure student variable as i have declared i have uh, taken or assign these values to the variable of structure student s and if you want to accept it that you can accept it from a user now here you can see that so this is nothing but a function call where function call is passing by value so in this we pass structure variable as an argument to a function so all these things i am going to explain with the help of example to make it very clear just as we pass any another variable to a function we can pass structure variable s to the function display and that we are going to pass here in this statement so now let's move to the definition of the statement so this is nothing but the definition of statement and here you can observe the thing that is why i have mentioned all these things as i am going to pass the variable s its data type we should have to use in the definition of the function so now while defining the function we passed a copy of the variable s we are not going to pass the uh, reference we are going to pass a copy because this s its copy we are going to store into the variable st you should have to keep in mind that the data type of the both that is s and st should get match then and then only it is going to be formed as a copy here you can see that the data type of s is nothing but structure student and the same thing for st we suppose to maintain that is nothing but the structure student again so that's why the copy of a variable s as its argument with the structure student return before it because the variable which we have passed is of the type structure name student so that's why s is of type variable or uh, uh, is of uh, type structure student variable so that's why the same thing we have to maintain and here as now the name of my variable is st so that's why that all the things i am going to access with the help of dot operator with the variable st st dot roll number st dot name and st dot phone number so in this way you can pass the structure variable by value or you can call the function by value with the structure variable now let's see pass by reference so here also i am going to explain the same thing with the help of same example only the difference is that here you can see that here i am passing the address of the structure type variable s and as i am going to pass the address of the structure type variable s that we supposed to accept that we supposed to collect into the variable whose data type must be same that is structure student but it should be a pointer type variable as we are going to pass the reference or as we are going to pass the address so call by reference is nothing but by passing the address we are going to use that particular variable so that's why this we have to collect into a pointer type variable so in passing by reference the address of the structure variable is passed to the function so that's why we have passed the very address of the structure variable so in this we change the structure variable which is inside the function the original structure variable which is used for calling the function also get changed why i repeat the statement listen carefully in this that is in pass by reference we can change the structure variable which is inside the function that is nothing but this is st if now here in this example i have just displayed the thing whatever you have accepted or we have assigned in this 
main function so that's why i'm displaying it but if we are going to make any changes in this st variable that is st roll number st name and st phone number that are going to be reflect in a main function as well because we are going to pass the original structure variable with the help of its address location so directly we are accessing the this st variable and it is pointing to the variable s so that's why the changes will happen into the variable that is s as well if we are going to do any changes in this function this is the key point behind passing by reference if you want to know details about or the uh, difference between call by value call by reference and all these things i am going to give you the shortcut link for a playlist of this call by value call by reference and their differences all these things i am going to give you in this shortcut link you can go through that i have already explained all these things in that example and then you will come to know the main idea behind call by value and call by reference and their difference as well so in this way we can pass the variable or with the help of reference and as we are passing the reference it will get collected into a pointer type variable and if it is a pointer type variable we have to use an arrow operator so with the <coughs> sorry with the help of this arrow operator we are going to access all the members of the structure students uh, so uh, okay ha huh. so this is uh, whatever i want to explain you that i have already explained that we have to uh, use the pointer type variable if we are going to pass the address of the structure type variable and again you have to keep in mind data type should be same today's topic is array of structure and pointer so here all of you are knowing i am assuming that all of you are knowing the concept of array of a structure as well as pointers to structure and here i am combining both the things in this concept that is how to use pointers to the array of the structure that's why i have said previously that you must have you must have to know or you must be knowing the concept of array of structure and pointers then and then only you will be able to continue with this today's session if you are knowing, not knowing the concept then it is recommended that to go through the previous video that is array of the structure as well as pointer to structure and then resume this current video i am assuming that all of you are knowing the concepts and now let's move next for the example how array of the structure with pointer works so here i am explaining you it with the help of simple program and with the help of graphical representation of the same so this is nothing but the structure declaration i hope all of you are knowing the structure declaration this is nothing but a main function where here you can see that i have declared an array of the structure that is stored Three. The name of the variable is nothing but the stored three, and its data type is user defined data type that is structure student. The another variable declared is nothing but a pointer type variable. Here you can see that. And what this pointer type variable will hold? It will hold an address of any another variable whose data type is structure student. So here that's why I am assigning. the base address of the array stored here you can see that this is nothing but an array and its base address i am going to assign to the pointer type variable stored ptr because this is nothing but a variable it is not any ordinary variable it is a pointer type variable and that's why it will hold the address which address the base address of the array that is stored and whose size is 3 here you can see that i would like to explain you one more thing is that whenever you are going to pass the name of the array it will be treated as the base address of the array you must be knowing all these things and if you are not knowing then keep in mind that the name of the array is nothing but the base address or a starting address of the array now let's move forward in this half of the portion i am going to explain you the main thing that 
how we are going to access all these things with the help of pointer if it is an array all these things must also be included in the main function or if you want to write down the another function a separate function by call by value or call by reference that also you can use over here that's why i have not included all these things in any of the function i i am keeping all these thing isolate because i just want to explain the concept the detail program that i am going to explain you in the next slide so all these things i am going to explain you with the help of graphical representation as well so here i have represented the array of the structure student graphically where this is nothing but the first student that is zeroth student here i is zero the same thing i have mentioned over here the same thing the next 44 bytes are for student one now if we are having a question that why 44 bytes so all these things i have already explained in my previous video you can go to that video memory allocation of a structure variable this is the name of the video or otherwise i am going to provide a shortcut link in this right up corner you can go through the video and then you can uh, resume this video again so this is for student one so that's why i am giving you the index i as equal to one and these are the last 44 bytes for student two if i am i'm i'm uh, starting my student array with zero so here you can see that the, so this is i equal to 2 i have used over here for every array it will be having the base address so whenever i am i have uh, explained you that is nothing but a store it means that the base address or a starting address of an array that is 66530 this address i am going to assign to the stored ptr now let's move forward next address will be after 44 bytes with which will be the address of the uh, first student if we are starting with zero and this six five six one eight will be the next uh, address for the second student now uh, let's start here i have used two for loops the first for loop is for accepting the values from the user here you can see that i have mentioned that in the comment line and the another for loop that i am going to use for printing or displaying the values which we have accepted previously now here we can see that whenever we are we are going to accept the values we supposed to use the c in that again the thing you must be knowing so in this scene what i have done i have used a variable pointer type variable stored ptr which i have declared in main itself after this i am going to use an array of op uh, arrow operator why i am going to use an array operator yes you are correct because this is nothing but a pointer type variable that's why whenever you are going to use, <coughs> use a pointer type variable to access any of the member of the structure you supposed to use an uh, arrow operator and after this i am going to use the roll number then the name and grade points all the three members of a structure simultaneously or after one by one so here you can see that the main important thing which i want to explain you over here where pointer or array of a structure with pointer is nothing but how to access all these things so now let's uh, change the ink color so you will uh, understand the difference between both now okay so here you can see that i have used plus i everywhere why i have used plus i over here because here you can see that this is an array of a structure i have declared size 3 over here you can see over here i have declared size 3 so that's why my for loop is running for three values that is for i is equal to 0 i is equal to 1 and i is equal to 3 the same thing i have mentioned over here that is i is equal to 0 here you can see that i is equal to 1 and here you can see that i is equal to 2 so for all the three values i am i am executing this for loop 
now let's see the next thing that how we are going to use a pointer with array of a structure so that's why this is a pointer type variable std ptr plus i is nothing but whenever you are going to use this std ptr and if you are initializing it with the base address how it will look like that i am going to explain you here so this is nothing but my stored pointer variable and here with the help of this stored pointer variable you can see that i am pointing to the base address that is starting address of my array so with the execution of this statement you are going to assign the base address of a array to the stored pointer and stored pointer plus i is nothing but i is equal to 0 and i we are going to use it with the uh, or for the index of the array so that's why here this i will get added that is index will get added with the base address so now whenever my stored ptr plus i is pointing to the base address of the array when i is equal to 0 means what it will access the roll number the name and the grade points they are associated with the stood zero so with this student all these things which are associated that all the values associated with the roll number name and gp or that is grade point that we have going to accept they will get stored at the address location for this 44 bytes now why these are the 44 bytes that you can uh, you must be knowing that I have already explained it in the uh, pre previous few minutes only. So now, so these four for, for first 44 bytes are associated with the 0th record. Now I++ plus plus we are going to perform. After that, let's check the condition I is less than 3 condition is true. So now I is incremented by 1. Here, now this stored pointer is pointing to the next student whose index is i so now same thing that i am going to explain you i am removing this and now i am pointing this stood pointer to the index one so what does it mean it means that now my stood pointer is a pointer type variable is pointing to the ith location it's nothing but i is equal to one that is for the first student so this is student that i am going to access now with the help of stood pointer now this ith student that i am going to access its roll number its name and its grade points respectively again i plus plus will be there i is less than three condition is true so now this pointer variable is now or will now point to the second that is stood two so now let's see the changes over here that i am going to remove and now my stored pointer is pointing that is stored pointer plus i when i is equal to 2 the same thing that is for the last 44 bytes i am going to access that stored pointer plus i its roll number stored pointer plus i and its name stored pointer plus i and its grade points the same thing that i am going to access so whatever user is going to insert the values accordingly it will get stored at these address locations and now at the end this for loop is will help you to print or to display the values with the help of same thing that is stored pointer plus i and its roll number stored pointer plus i and its name and at the end again stored pointer plus i and its grade points so in this way you can access all the three records from the array student with the help of pointer to the structure same program i have explained in the next slide so now let's move to the next slide and here you can see that the program is explained with the same example that i have explained in the previous uh, all the uh, video sessions you have to keep in mind that i have not given the output in any of the video the purpose behind all these things is nothing but to motivate all of you to execute all the codes by your own to know what will be the output in case of any query any question any error you can ask me in a chat box or 
you can ask it to me into the comment box i'll resolve your query as well as your question or the error so now here you can see the student structure student i have declared i have declared the main that is an array of five student i have declared the pointer type variable std ptr just same as of our previous example and i have assigned the base address of the array std after this the same thing i have used that is std pointer i and its roll number std pointer i and its name std pointer i and its phone number so the same thing uh, we have mentioned over here and accordingly we are accessing it with the help of you can see over here with the help of an arrow operator because this is a pointer type variable so in this way we are accepting the values from a user and in the same way we are displaying the values over here so uh, this is nothing but all the c out statements they are helpful to display the content of the array with the help of pointer variable with the help of arrow operator so i request you to execute this code let's check the output <coughs> and you will be able to understand the concept of array of structure with pointers so thank you all dear friends for listening and watching my video please do not forget to give the comment if you like the content and the video here i am providing you a subscription link please do subscribe my channel tech talks along with this i am providing you a shortcut link for a next video as well as i am providing you a shortcut link for a playlist of this video series structure in c++ thank you and stay tuned with tech talks thank you